Welcome to day three of the World Climbing Club in Keishao and it's time for the men's qualifying and finals. But first of all, not all of you are experts at comp climbing. So we're going to go through some of the basic terminology, including what is a slab? I've got the perfect man to tell us more. Hello, Sergio. How are you doing, man? Hello. All good. OK, Sergio, we're standing in front of a bit of wall we want to know about. So what is it and why do we call it its name? Yeah, uh, the wall, this call is called a slab. So a slab is a wall from zero degrees to minus, yeah. So normally it's minus five, the normal uh, inclination of the slab. In this case it's minus two. For example, in the Olympic wall it's, it will be vertical, so it will be zero degrees. Okay, so it's the angle of the wall which is why it's called a slab. Now, I'm looking at the overhang over there, and to me, something overhanging seems harder because it's more physical. So isn't it easy on a slab? No, uh, so of course the overhanging part of the wall is more physical and this is more technical. And then if it's hard or easy, it just depends on the, of the boulder. So here we try to do the technical boulders in the slab and it can be really hard if you put small footholds or really flat footholds. An overhang can be really easy if you put big jacks. So it depends on the setting. And what kind of skills do you need as a climber to be a good slab climber? I think you need a lot of balance, you need also patience, you need a good footwork, uh, yeah, you need also flexibility, I think it can, play, it can play a good role on the slab. Well, Sergio, thank you so much, really enjoying the boulders, so I appreciate that. Right, let's get on with some more highlight action. Due to rain and the cancellation of the men's climbing on Monday, qualifications were moved to Wednesday morning. But as usual, we were looking to cut the field down to just 20 athletes. It was a hard set, with the route setters ramping up the difficulty and making full use of the different wall angles available. The athletes, of course, gave it their all, and it was awesome to watch them on those hard boulders. Here are the athletes who have made it through to the semi-final slash final round. Travel, and especially international travel, can play havoc on the body. But of course, we have athletes here and they need to compete and perform. So before the competition started, we spent some time in isolation where the athletes had a chance to warm up, stretch and get ready for this intense week of climbing. So let's find out how they did it. This is the warm-up area in the stadium and Hannes is in the middle of what looks like a stretching routine. Hello mate, how are you? Hello, good, good, you? Uh, yeah, I'm good. It's crazy to be back, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's super fun. Yeah, really excited. Really good. Well, look, we've got this amazing facility here. Just tell me a little bit about what you're doing to get over jet lag and get ready for the competition tomorrow. So uh, me, I, I like to do like some stretching, like right after the flight, I went uh, for a small run mm -hmm. just to activate a little bit. So we arrived yesterday uh, in the morning and then I, I tried to nap, like do a lot of naps uh, to catch some, uh, to, to catch some, uh, some sleep. And yeah, that's, that's basically it. I try to sleep as much as possible, like 10 hours a night I try, because it's hard uh, sleeping, like waking up during the night, so uh, yeah. That's right. And the fingerboard you've got with you, that looks like your own fingerboard. So is that something you travel with? Yeah, yeah, yeah I travel with this one. Just uh, I already have it for a long time. Like, um, yeah, I always take it with me because it's, it's not too big. It's, it's easy and it's everything I need to warm up. Awesome, man. Well, look, we'll leave you to it. Uh, best of luck with the warm up and good luck tomorrow. Yes, thank you. Thanks, man. Hello, sorry to bother you. How's things? Good, very good. For, for people who don't know you, yeah. just tell us who you are and what sure. you do. Yeah. So I'm Zach Di Cristino. I'm with the USA Climbing Team. I serve as their uh, team PT or physio and uh, medical manager. And I help out with a little bit of program in terms of training. So. Well, you are the perfect person to talk to <laughs> because we're talking about warming up today. Yeah, yeah. When did you guys arrive in China? So we got in late last night. Mm -hmm. um, so we kind of flew in and then we kind of uh, took the bus here. So it was a lot of sitting. Um, which is not ideal. So usually sometimes the body does weird things, you know, the next day when you sit that long and you're that sort of like uh, sedentary. So for today it's more just like getting them moving. Um, nothing too complex other than some things like you want to kind of like prime your power. So like you're doing things like right now in the steep ball is a good thing to do. Mm -hmm. Maybe some of the coordination things that you can tend to lose quickly. Yeah. Um, so those are things we like to really kind of prime right before a comp. Uh, some of them haven't climbed in a couple days in their own training, so they might want to climb a little more, some a little less to save skin. 
So, all right. Well, look, uh, best of luck for the yeah. warm up and uh, to you tomorrow for all the right, comp. See you later, man. Hello, Campbell. How are hey, you doing? Matt. I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm very good. Um, I've noticed you're stretching, and I'm in desperate need of a stretch. Yes. This because my off the airport. I, I got off the plane. I went for a run last night, so mm. that's good. But now I feel stiff and disgusting. Yeah. So <laughs> what should I do? Can you give me some? Oh. Oh. You've got like what? You you're hamstringing? Yeah. At the moment, I'm just doing hamstrings. Fun yeah. hamstrings is good, but after like a long flight, I really like upper body stuff as well. Okay. Or like anything thoracic, like uh, or what I do, maybe like this sort of stretch, I something that like gets my. So, so you go, so you go like yeah, like left leg comes over, right leg comes over the leg. Yes. You have your hands straight behind you, yeah. and you just like twist. Oh, that feels good. And if you're really lucky, you get like a crack. Yeah, there it just went down yeah. low. That sort of stuff after flying is my favorite. Yeah, that feels quite nice. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. And then generally, what's your routine with this? Because like, how long have you been in China for? I've been here for like two days now. Okay. Um, and I was a bit sick before the comp, so I, I didn't, and I didn't really get to climb. So I've kind of rested maybe like a little more than usual, but it's not been too bad. Um, just like figuring out where the good spots to eat are. And um, there's not really too many gyms around here, but we've got access to the warm up wall today, which is nice. Um, wall, yeah, for sure, for sure. Plenty of space, hopefully. Um, should do the trick. I think. Yeah. Okay, how are you feeling? Yeah, good, good. I, I think I don't have like a ton of World Cup boulder experience under my belt, I guess, compared to my lead. So I'm looking forward to like doing a few events this year and kind of like getting into a bit of a flow. Um, yeah, I'm excited to boulder again. I think it's going to be fun. Nice. And you are, of course, future Olympian yes. this summer. Yeah. Um, has that taken the pressure off you a little bit or are you, does it sort of put a target on your back? Mm, yeah, it's different kind of pressure. I mean, like there's an awareness of like having qualified and knowing other people are still like going for that ticket. Um, maybe there'll be a few more people who might like look for my name in the standings to see where I'm at. But like ultimately qualifying for the Olympics like doesn't change anything about me as a climber. So like my goals are still the same. I'm still putting in the same work and you know, I'm still learning a lot, even after many years on the circuit. So, like, there's a little bit of pressure, but it's all like, I've, it's all like made up in my own head, I think. <laughs> I'll let you get back to it. Good luck tomorrow. I hope it goes Thanks well. So much. See you in a bit. You guys asked for it continuously. Stasha is back in the commentary box. You're a crowd favourite. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Look, Stasha, we've got a unique situation tonight. It's a mm. finals, but semi-final format. And you did this in Seoul. So does it change anything as an athlete or for them out there today? Uh, it changes a lot because I think the boulders are then extra hard because the separation needs to be even better as it finishes with the podium. There's no, you need to make top, si top six. You need to like fully separate the top three and then everyone else. Or maybe there's even more emphasis on separating the first three to five than actually what happens in the rest. And it doesn't even matter anymore if boulders get topped or not. Um, last year we had it in Seoul and it was again due to the rain. And that time we also had a massive rain while we climbed in that semi-final final. So it was extra stressful, really. Um, I remember I was 10th place. Uh, I had all the zones, but no tops. I was falling on every top hold just didn't work out, um, but yeah, I'm excited to see how the results will play out today. Um, For some athletes, maybe it takes the stress away though, because instead of just being focused on six people, you've got 20, so it must feel different. So perhaps some will sort of rise up. Yeah, it is very different. There's like just one round and you have to give it all in. It's um, very complex. The boulders get difficult all the way in from the start to the top. So you can fall basically anywhere. You need to, you're basically like collecting points. So this feels like combined, to be honest. But um, yeah, there's this extra adrenaline because it's a final with a rotation uh, and with that added difficulty. So um, maybe it will be an extra motivation for some to that struggle to perform in a casual, like regular final, yeah. that maybe this format suits them better and they can maybe outperform the other competitors. Who knows? Somehow you've made me more excited for this now. I'm actually really <laughs> psyched. So we've got to get on with it. You've got to go away because uh, we have to do some broadcasting. See you in a bit, guys. <laughs> Fifth went to Sam Avazu. Another good night for the Avazu family and Sam thrashed the final slab. Toby Roberts was in fourth. He battled hard, but two tops and a zone couldn't get him onto the podium.
The slab king himself, Hannes van Dyssen, sent the last slab quickly to guarantee his bronze medal. Saratu and Raku kept us guessing to the end. But he won silver by being one of only two people to top Boulder 3. He was on form all competition, and Tomoe at Narasaki walked away with the gold medal. Two flashes and two zones were enough for the top spot on the podium. What a performance and what a night 